This is Twit. Matthew Panzerino retweeted something on the AR Kit 4.0 demos that shows uh, a visualization of this new technology they have, which basically pulls down everything from Apple Maps, including all the look around features, along with the point cloud of the vicinity that you're in, all the information you've acquired about that vicinity and like orientation of your device and everything. And it just, it it's sort of mind blowing how step by step, a uh, year after year, they've been rapidly expanding AR kit. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm sure for obvious reasons, but just the, the, the amount of stuff they're showing off this year is ridiculous. So it's a video, right? It's a Twitter video. Yeah. He retweeted it a couple of days ago. Okay. Um, AR. If you can get past all the bread. AR kit. In his timeline. AR kit four. I do not think it's possible for anyone who doesn't hoover up what's going on in AR to internalize how wild this is. This is the metaverse building equivalent to he just tweeted it out explain this is a he's retweeting joel bernstein um and i take it this is the apple presentation you were talking about yeah without worrying about yeah. any of this complexity yeah well i just missed it because it was only so when using geo tracking using geo so let's see the here's the, the video map data from apple maps around your current location part of this data is a localization map that contains feature points of the surrounding area that can be seen from the street then with the localization map, your current location and images from Well, your this device. is just map info. Like this is not AR kit. That's the rest of it is all AR, is, is all AR kit. So you mean I can take all this data that Apple's been generating for years for maps and yeah. and their version of what do they call it? They don't call it Street View, but uh, look around. Look around. Yeah. And it's now available as data for my augmented reality app. Yes. Whoa. That's why for he's experience, talking about, if you don't make apps, but experience, yeah. That's why he's talking about uh, the metaverse, right? Yeah. So, uh, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> Grand, the Grand Theft Auto, Auto, Cambridge, Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> I hope more than that. Well, the metaverse implies that you would be uh, able to put on your Apple branded AR glasses and be in. Cambridge, right? And I could go and meet Andy at the MIT flea market and we could wander around, right? It would it would be it would be an interesting application to say that I don't uh, if all I have to do is transmit the part that is Andy and I could I don't have to transmit the the part behind him but we're not talking about chat here that that, that would still be a really inefficient way of doing it. Um, I think this is one of those really great features where uh, the opportunities for a really really clever developer to make something great with it are apparent enough that you just go ahead and do it and then let those pe let those folks create those opportunities like imagine an architectural app where you want to figure out like what will it what will happen to shadow lines if we put this building here or what what will happen if uh, i want to i'm considering uh, uh visiting this location or having a music festival in this location at this time of year uh, and also i have access to uh, to uh, 50 years of daily weather data for that date in the date in the year and now i can actually figure out uh, not only figure out what it's going to look like but also model what the traffic flow is going to be um as to what actual consumers are going to benefit from it beyond look around anybody's guess I, I think i think that some features are there for this is such a this is such an interesting we've we've spent so much money developing this data set it we would not be realizing the value of this data set if all we did was use it to enhance maps we want to enhance the entire platform and the only way to enhance the entire platform is to make a new resource available to developers and that's why they're making this data set available so uh do I need a new iPad Pro with LiDAR to take advantage of this? I know as the developer, better. I don't, but I would probably, it would work better. It's better. Well, it's going to be in stages. Like right now it's on the iPad Pro because they just needed to get LiDAR out into the world. And they showed some demos now with the new depth API and with the new heat map for, you know, measuring depth, all the things that you can do with that. And everybody presumes that's coming to the iPhone, you know, this year and to Apple Glasses eventually. But, you know, just, just to make Andy's Mac Break Weekly experience complete, you could imagine like <laughs> Pokemon Go or Wizards United where you they are actually interacting with the real world. It's not just a, like a, a digital thing, happenstantially 
layered on top of you, but it's running around trees, it's climbing buildings. You look up and there's the Hogwarts dragon curled around the you know the bank yeah. uh, on your street down the corner. Uh, there's King Kong on the Empire State Building because I've always wanted to see <laughs> King Kong on the Empire. Yeah. And they announced that too. They announced that you can place AR objects right now with iOS 14 in what they call points of interest, like like major geographical locations around the world. This is interesting. Yeah, so this is a this is a essentially a heat map that shows not temperature but depth. Yeah. The closer to me, yep. it's cooler. The farther away, it's hotter. Uh, and that is a smooth gradient. That is very. Yes. Yeah. So that's why you could place and totally occluded. Like you can you can do full object occlusion within exactly that, yep. that's that map. Wow. That's one of the biggest thing one of the biggest steps forward for AR is for the ability for okay your Pokemon to walk behind a chair <laughs> and the chair is covering up where uh, is is uh, occluding uh, a, a character that, or an object that's supposed to be walked behind it. It's really really cool. It was it, it was very very cool to say everybody gather around uh was it 3 years ago 4 years ago WWC gather around this strangely tech wood grain <laughs> textured table. Yeah. <laughs> and play ping and, pong and, and enjoy our AR experience. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh no 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 no! no. You don't don't move the phone off the table. It has to be there. But it's it's going to be this. Is, see, this is like uh, this is a great uh, look forward looking thing for when we do have the sort of a Hololens style wearable AR glasses where it's not just projecting a small piece of information that's useful. It's not just uh, displaying a widget. It is actually doing magic leap sort of stuff because that's when you get things like I'm going to put a display on that wall over there that simply reminds me of like when someone is online or not because I need to talk to that person. And that's when you get interesting, uh, I will say hippie-like, but really still very, very interesting interfaces like uh, like what uh, Google showed off at I.O. a few years ago but never delivered on, saying that, well, yes, we yes we could, when, when giving you map directions that you're, that you're following as you're walking, just give you like floating arrows to go around things. But wouldn't you rather be yeah. like following a fox that just look yeah. the foxes and, and the fox is waiting at the street corner and sitting and like cleaning its paws because he's waiting for you to catch up and then he's going to like actually go left to show you the keep following the fox isn't that more interesting because this it taps into uh it taps into software that is, that's in our brains that is not that is pre-language you know there was a time yes. which we didn't have turn left at this next next intersection make sure that you're on elm street but simply that oh well i'm going to i i, I know that there's a fire over there and i want to go to the fire so i'm just going to walk until the fire is, is getting bigger and bigger in my mind's eye that's not just cute it's not just the the ultimate caveman skeuomorphism this is making things that are <laughs> In things that you you can infer how it works that you're you're wired up to simply understand that this is what you're meant to do as opposed to learning a clever new interface. So this is why this sort of stuff could be uh, quite transformative. So you're going to your point earlier, Leo, and Andy's point now. The uh, reality kit has has also added um, video as a texture, so you can do things like yeah. place a screen on the wall and watch your TV in AR, but also uh, map the screen to like a, an object and have uh, an animated face, or map it to yeah, water wow. like a river and have an animated texture. So it, it's just ramping up the realism that you can deliver, and also the certain like the opportunistic uh, interfaces. We all see in the movies, right? Like the screen just appears in front of him and he taps it. And the, it's really the gestures that are doing the work. But as a human, we relate to whatever the physical object is in front of us. So if you're just mapping a video of an interface and reacting to what we're moving our hands on, it just makes that experience nicer. And that's, yeah. that's again, shipping in iOS 14. Watch as I run this augmented reality vase all over this chair. <laughs> um, the power to be your best. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, it's apparently doing ray casting. Uh, I don't see any lighting effects, but it, at least it knows. That's what that Carrie's it's, it's, bedroom it's, looked it's, like when she was a kid. Yeah, yeah. there you go. The now, face is always that attention to the fa to the right, surface of that right. object. It's just it's like impressive. you're you're running that around the chair. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, and the and the objects moving. Uh, this uh, means I would guess that lidar in every uh, future Apple device. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, and it's privacy respecting too, which in ways that regular cameras have been problematic in the right. past, which is a nice benefit for Apple. Yeah. Because yeah, the lidar and radar are really important technologies because you can't. It's it's very clever to say, hey, get, this is this uh, this camera is this device is a camera that's taking pictures at 60 frames per second. As soon as people say camera taking pictures, they don't want any part of it, right. particularly if you're in the room with it. But when you say, well, no, it's actually radar. It's a, so it's not actually seeing anything. It's only taking really really high depth like distance measurements and let's not and let's not mention that if it's sufficiently uh, sufficient 
technology that it's actually mapping everybody's faces as they go in. So they're getting much, much more information yeah. than, than pictures. But but you know what I mean? Here's uh, the face mapping uh, demo that you were talking about. And this is more than Memojis, right? This you could you could map it onto. Uh, I mean, you can make uh, what is it? Um, Snapchat filters. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's exciting. I must say that is a breakthrough technology. <laughs> I think I think it's more it's more imp one of the many things that are impressive for this are when it becomes stuff like uh, uh, a kit that you a, a a when it becomes like a plug in for iMovie, uh, not not even Final Cut, but just I, w I want to make a movie, but it's only me and my two friends, and neither of them are dogs or orcs. And I really, I really need a dog in this scene. Let's just make, sure, let's just do motion, like on the fly motion capture, yeah, so that this character, right? Uh, that's the sort because I, I, I keep coming back to how wonderful, how incredible it is that you have all of these YouTube creators that are well on, uh, in their twenties or in their teens who grew up with non-linear editing and a, and a high definition camera right on their phones, and just like I learned how to write because I had access to word processors from the, from basically the first time I tried to use. I tried to learn how to write, uh, which meant, which made me, which which gave me certain advantages that other generations didn't have. Once we get into the sort of thing where now the generation that uh, the, the generation Z or double Z or whatever they're calling it these days, the, this generation says, whenever they have creative ideas that involve, actually, I really want the story I'm telling to take place in space, but imagine that uh, that the Mongol hordes are a space conquering race. And, and 10 minutes later or 20 minutes later, just by downloading some stock 3D imagery or by building it themselves, their story that they're telling is, is taking place wherever they want it to happen. I'm so excited to see what happens when that becomes casual and free. Yeah.